ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Eisenhower Eagle Football Review. And congratulations to the Eisenhower Eagles defeating the Henry Ford II Falcons 66 to nothing and an undefeated regular season. And uh, they're special here at Eisenhower. We've had a few of them, but this is a special team. Uh, there's no question it's a special team. These guys like being together. they are uh, got great chemistry. Um, they love being at practice. They have fun. Uh, and... Uh, you know, it's, it just shows up in on, in the game. You know, and they're they're rooting each other on. There's, you know, uh, guys coming in in the second, third quarter. Our starters are rooting those guys on, and uh, you know, it really is special to be around. I'm just uh, I'm just proud of the way these guys play, and um, I hope we can continue it. Well, you know, there there was no secret tonight that uh, this was not going to be a close game. Uh, the Falcons had only won two games all year, and and they were just kind of holding on just to try to finish the season out. In a game like that, how difficult is it to keep your starters in, and or to even and you don't want to pull guys, so you know. Yeah, no, you know we took our guys out early. I mean, I think you saw um, what we tried to do is get. I mean, the second quarter we had. Most of our backups in, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, we wanted to get our backup quarterback some reps with our starting offensive line because I think that's important so that he can get the timing down in case we need him in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, it's not difficult. Our guys, uh, you know, everybody on our team practices. Everybody on the team knows their stuff. So um, it's great when they get to come out here and, and uh, step in and, and play that role. So you find out who you play officially on Sunday night, but as a Speculation, who do you think you're going to get in the playoff? I can't. You know what? It's hard this year because there's so many teams that are right on the bubble uh, of six wins. I don't know how many uh, five and uh, four teams are going to get in, so you don't know which teams that are five and four are going to be in and then where they put you in. But, um, you know, if, if it goes by what's happened recently with us, you know, we're going to have teams like Dakota, Romeo, or, uh, you know, those teams in our district. So, um, you know, we'll be prepared, whoever it is. We're excited to find out who it is. We love the show. It's a great show and uh, to find out. I love how the um, um, MHSA does it, um, puts you in suspense, and uh, it's just a great way that they do it, and we're excited to watch it. In a game with all kinds of offense and uh, points being scored, uh, Ryan Chargo, you, uh, you kind of put a charge into the Eagles, uh, both offensively, defensively, and on special teams with that punt return. Talk about the punt return. It's looks like your first game doing punt returns. Yes, yeah, so it was the first game doing punt return. Um, me and Stroll were back there. Uh, we have communication, and uh, I called it. And I, there was a big hole in the right. I took it, um, used my speed, took it off the races, and scored. Were you surprised at how much green was in front of you? Uh, a little bit. I expected to be more defenders because of the high punt. But it is how it is. Now talk about your big play on defense. Um, my big play was a tackle on the screen route. Um, there was no around, so I had to make the tackle for sure. If I didn't, uh, it been for a big gain. So. Well, you guys have been running it up all year on, on teams. I mean, it's, you can't help but slow down. Uh, tell me a little bit about your feelings going into the playoffs. Our feelings are great. We have a great experience. Um, we have good confidence. Um, we're going to make a big run. Hopefully, and uh, let's keep it going. All right, I know you want to say hello to some folks out there, so I'll let you do that now. Uh, I just want to say hello to my parents, uh, my grandma and grandma. Um, my grandma came down out from up north this weekend to stay with me, and my dog that passed away. Eisenhower is lineman of the game, uh, Ryan Belts. And Ryan, you got into some action here in the last few games uh, as uh, Logan Smith was hurt, and you got a chance to play a little bit more. Uh, what's that feel like? It feels great, you know, the work all season, and I get to play some games, you know, with the team that we, that we all, well, a team, we all love each other, we're all putting in work, so it's nice to see, you know, again some time. What did it feel like out there when you guys up 21 to nothing in the first quarter? It felt amazing. All that hard work paid off. What's your secret there? You know, you got Noel Lametta, who's not a giant either out there, and you guys are plugging up that many. You got some of these, some of the bigger guys uh, out there in the league going after you guys. What, what's your thought process playing defensive line? You got to be stronger and you got to get lower than them. If you can get a push on them and they can't push you back, you plug the hole, you did your job well. How about this 14 tonight? Did they seem to kind of quit on it a little bit, you think? Yes, they quit probably after the 21 points. How do you feel about going into the playoffs? I feel amazing. I feel like we have a good shot for uh, states. Don't, but I don't want to be cocky, but we have a good shot. Well, I know you want to say hello to some folks out there, so I'll let you say hello to some people. 
Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Belts. Eisenhower's defensive player of the game and player of the game, John Fantuzzo, kind of set the tone early uh, for the Eisenhower Eagles with that big interception. Talk about that play, what were you reading on that play? Uh, I was in press coverage, so I had to jam the man, and then I saw the quarterback's eyes just go to him, he never looked me off, and I just found the ball. I, you know, it was a difficult ball to catch, I mean, when did you pick it up? Uh, I kind of had it the whole time, really. Like, it wasn't really, I don't know, it just happened. Yeah. And and when you, when you got it and down, what does it felt like to get down on the ground and grab that baby? Oh, it felt good because I haven't had one all year and I've been waiting on it, so that was good. Ford kept trying to get outside with, like, like screens of their wide receivers, and you guys seemed to cover pretty well. Um, did, did you think you'd be challenged more? Uh... I mean, not really. We practice it in practice, and we've been practicing screens all year, so it's kind of, I don't know, we've been used to it. And, you know, your defense, I agree. you got John Strobel back there. He's got six interceptions. Ryan Chargo's got a couple. What, what's it like playing with those guys? Oh, it's great. We have a great time at practice joking around with each other and stuff, so it's all fun. And you made some good tackles on special teams coming down there, uh, sticking those arms out. I thought the guy was going to rip your arm off, but you knocked him down. Oh, yeah, it hurt pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, it was, it was fun when I got up. Everyone was cheering, so that was good. What's it feel like to be in the playoffs? Oh, it feels real good. You know, you've been waiting on it all season. Now, now what you're playing for is the state championship. Just focus on that. Okay, well, I know you want to say hello to some folks out there, so go ahead. Yeah, I want to say hey to my boy Assad. Jack Eggert, Nick Fidel, and Ham, and shout out to the whole Goon Bus. Our offensive star of the game, Caleb Oyster. Caleb, uh, you've been on JV all season. Got a couple of touchdowns, uh, one by, by the run, and uh, the other one uh, a return on a kickoff. Uh, let's talk about that running play. Uh, the running play, it was, it was pretty simple. It was, just, uh, it was just a dive that the lineman blocked good, and I was able to get a cut back, and it was touchdowns right there, so I just had to grab it. Yeah. Now the second half kickoff, you know there's a running clock in the second half, yeah. and so I guess you want to score quickly. Yeah, I figured I came out and tried to do it as quick as we could, end the game, get the other guys in there, because, I mean, the guys, it's its really not us. It's all the guys who prepare us for the game, all the guys who are on scout team and all that that come in and prepare us for this. So I was just trying to get them in the game. How about your JV season this year? How did how'd you guys do? How did you do and how did you guys do? Uh, our team did pretty good last uh, in our ninth grade season for freshmen. They went uh, five and four, and this year we went seven and two on JV. And uh, me personally, I had 22 touchdowns and over a thousand yards of rushing. Well, were you surprised that you're going to get uh, to be on varsity as a 10th grader and going into the state playoffs? Um, I mean, I was a little surprised because I mean, just I never thought this could happen. It's just just the way the season turned out. So. Well, congratulations on, on being up here on the squad and a couple touchdowns tonight. I know there's some people you want to say hello to, so I'll let you go ahead and do that. Uh, shout out to my JV team for preparing me for this and the whole season. We'll be back with game highlights in just one minute. It's another fall Friday night, and your kids should be playing. playing high school football. It's a fun game, and it's safer than ever. It's safe because the rules, the coaching, and the equipment are better than ever before. As a result, serious injuries are at an all-time low. Seriously. And build strong schools, lifetime memories, and tomorrow's community leaders. And it's mother approved. It's a great game, and we want to teach it to your kids. It's homecoming at Eisenhower, and for the 37th time in their history, the Eisenhower Eagles and the Henry Ford II Falcons would meet. Eisenhower has 27 wins, Ford has 10. The Eagles would try and complete an undefeated season this night.
would get the ball first, and the Eagles' defense were flying to the football. The Falcons went to the air. Jack Preventure picks off this errant pass, takes it 45 yards for an apparent touchdown. The play is called back, however, because of an eagle penalty. Max Whitworth sees an opening, gets a key block from Jack Morris, makes a cut across, and goes in from 20 yards out for the game's first score. The extra point was good, and Eisenhower led 7 to nothing. On Ford's next possession, Noah Lametta makes a big stop on third down, forcing Ford to punt. Max Whitworth does it again with his legs, as he gets 16 yards on this run. Then Whitworth heaves this bomb to number 39, Ben Metz, who scores on this 51-yard pass play. The extra point was good, and Eisenhower led 14 to nothing. Number 24, John Fantuzzo, makes this great interception, and Eisenhower has the football again. Jack Preventure gets 24 yards here, down to the Falcon 13-yard line. Preventure would take this pitch from Max Whitwer into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point was good, and Eisenhower led 21 to nothing. Again, Eisenhower's offense strikes as Whitwer hits Asad Buhaidar, who makes a good adjustment to the football, and Buhaidar takes it to the Ford 10. Jack Preventure would score his second touchdown of the game on this run, and Ike now led 28 to nothing. Ike forces Ford to punt again, and John Strobel gets a good return on this punt. On the first play of the second quarter, Jack Preventure gets good blocking, goes around the left side, and takes it 52 yards for his third touchdown of the night, and Eisenhower led 35 to nothing. Number 35, Kevin Wright, gets a hand up here and thwarts this Falcon pass attempt. Ryan Chargo initially drops this punted ball, but he picks it up 
and races 47 yards to the end zone. Another Eagle touchdown. The extra point was good, and Eisenhower led 42 to nothing. Highlight number 16. Danny Smick would tip this forward pass, and John Strobel is jotting on the spot and picks it off. Brandon Hicks takes over at quarterback and takes off right where Max Whitwer left off. That run by Hicks would set up this 15-yard touchdown run by number 32, Kaleeb Oyster. The extra point was good and Ike led 49 to nothing. Ford's only highlight offensively is this 31 yard run by number nine, Byron Kenyatta. The Falcons go for it on fourth down. The Eagles, Kevin Wright, John Strobel, and Jacob Devereaux team up to stop them short of the first down. How about this nifty run by quarterback Brandon Hicks? Then number 32, Kaleeb, Crazy Legs Oyster, weaves his way for 33 yards and an eagle first down. Oyster's run would lead to this 26-yard field goal by Anthony Toko. The Eagles now led 52 to nothing. And that is how the first half would end, with Eisenhower leading 52 to nothing. Eisenhower received the second half kickoff, and Khalid Oyster takes it 88 yards for the touchdown. The extra point was good, and Eisenhower led 59 to nothing. This Falcon screen pass attempt is picked off by number 67, Alex Schmidt, and it's first and 10, Eisenhower. Schmidt's interception would lead to this five yard touchdown run by Antonio Gray. The extra point was good and Eisenhower led 66 to nothing. Mario Augusta and Drake Minnie team up to make the tackle on the kickoff, and that's all she wrote for Henry Ford II. The Eisenhower Eagles defeat the Henry Ford II Falcons 66 to nothing to go undefeated in the regular season for the first time since 2004.
Stay tuned for our homecoming special feature right after this. It's homecoming time at Eisenhower, and it's time to meet our homecoming court. The homecoming king was selected earlier in the day, and it's number 72, Matt Sermo, Eisenhower's offensive lineman. Let's meet the Eisenhower Eagle homecoming court. Brooke Coleman attended Ewell and Morgan Elementary in Mallow Junior High. Her favorite color is blue, and her favorite song is the Eisenhower fight song. Her role model is her mom, because she's awesome and a great mom. Her proudest moment is making homecoming court. Her favorite teachers are Mrs. Holt, Mrs. Minton, and Breezy. In her free time, she likes to watch The Office and eat pizza. Her favorite subject is chemistry. Her dream career is to be a Christian music singer. Brooke is kind of a big deal because she is an Eisenhower Eagle. Alana Lacito attended St. Lawrence Elementary School in Mallow Junior High. Her favorite color is purple, and her favorite song is Higher by Rihanna. Her role models are her mom and dad because they love and support her through everything. Her proudest moment was making varsity cheer in her freshman year. In her free time, she likes to hang out with friends and family. Her favorite subject is psychology. Her dream career is a lawyer. Alana is kind of a big deal because she maintains good grades while being involved in sports and clubs. Suzanne Osinski attended Beck Elementary and Shelby Junior High. Her favorite color is pink and her favorite song is Show Goes On. Her role model is her mom because she is always supportive and her best friend. Her proudest moment is winning dance team nationals. Her favorite teacher is Mrs. Georgie. In her free time, she likes to shop, sleep, and hang out with friends. Her favorite subject is math and her dream career is a nurse and a theseist. Suzanne is kind of a big deal because she maintains a 3.99 grade point average while belonging to six clubs and holding leadership positions in a few of them. Catherine Cirillo attended Chrisman Elementary and Mallow Junior High. Her favorite color is blue. Her favorite song is Partitioned by Beyonce or Gold Digger by Kanye West. Her role model is her mom because she is the strongest, kindest woman she knows. Her proudest moment is making varsity volleyball as a freshman. Her favorite teachers are Mr. Kopecia, and Mrs. Minton. In her free time, she likes to shop, sleep, and hang out with family and friends. Her favorite subject is science, and her dream career would be to become a pediatrician. Catherine is kind of a big deal because she is nice to everyone, regardless of what social group or clique they are in. Olivia Shaw attended Beacon Tree Elementary in Shelby Junior High. Her favorite color is pink. Her favorite song is Kiss Kiss by Chris Brown and T-Pain. Her role models are her parents because they work very hard and are the smartest people she knows. Her proudest moment is when she taught her dog how to play dead when she says bang. In her free time, she likes to hang out with friends and cuddle with her dog. Her favorite subject is English and her dream career is a physician's assistant of dermatology. Olivia is kind of a big deal because she has finished a Stephen King novel in one day. Olivia Shaw! Congratulations to Olivia Shaw, homecoming queen, 2016 here at Eisenhower High School. I'm here with the 2016 Eisenhower Eagle homecoming queen, Olivia Shaw. And Olivia, you got to be surprised, right? Yeah, I mean, this is awesome. I'm really happy right now. Did you think you were going to win this thing? I mean, the court is filled with, like, amazing girls. It could have gone any way. And I, I really mean that. It was, it was so close, I'm sure, if I did win. So. Did your parents say anything to you before you came out there? They were just telling me, like, you know, smile, be confident, don't be worried, and I'm, I'm really happy that I wasn't too worried because it paid off. <laughs> so you got to do the first dance with the homecoming king, but then you can dance with a boyfriend. Who's that? Uh, my dad, of course. <laughs> no, 
um, I meet nobody right now. I'm just hanging solo. <laughs> Oh man, there's got to be some Eisenhower guys that are going to want to dance with you at homecoming. If they want to dance with me, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we will. I don't know. <laughs> what does Olivia want to do when she gets out of high school? Um, I want to be a physician assistant of dermatology. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds cool. Where do you think you're going to go? I've been looking at Wayne State a lot, um, University of Detroit Mercy also. I don't know. I have a lot of options I'm just kind of exploring right now. Well, best of luck to you in the future, and congratulations tonight. Thank you so much. Well, folks, the Eisenhower Eagles complete an undefeated season with a victory, 66 to nothing over the Henry Ford II Falcons, just a sort of crowning jewel on this whole season. Uh, the Eagles just running through it like a hot knife through butter. But the playoffs are going to start. It's going to get tougher now, and the Eagles have to come up with their best efforts of the season. For Coach Chris Smith, I'm Tim Meyer saying we'll see you next time right here on the Eisenhower Eagle Football Review.